Okay, so in Module 4C, we talked about how to frame the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis for doing hypothesis testing. Now we're going to actually do hypothesis testing by talking about the uh, statistical analysis part of, of this. There are both uh, two-tailed tests where you want to test whether uh, a value is close to the mean or far from the mean, and also one-tailed tests where you want to test whether a certain value is uh, far above the mean or far below the mean, or far above or below a proportion. We're going to take a look at why we use different calculations, that is basically why we uh, either use the t-distribution versus the uh, normal distribution when we're doing hypothesis tests regarding proportions versus uh, means. And we're going to make use of aisle along the way for this. Okay, so the null hypothesis, which we call H0, is the favored hypothesis or the default hypothesis that we either believe or fear is probably true. And we're going to reject this null hypothesis in favor of our alternative hypothesis H1 or HA if analysis of the sample strongly favors the alternative hypothesis. What do we, call, what do we mean by strongly favoring? Well, we have this value usually just called alpha, which is the so-called significance level of the test. And alpha that is most commonly used in statistical analysis is 0 0.05. Now, why do we use 0 0.05? Well, basically because 0 0.05 is what Ronald Fisher recommended in his book. Okay, so uh, for a lot of purposes, uh, the significance level of 0 0.05 is, you know, is fine. For a lot of purposes, it's not fine. Uh, for example, if you uh, installed new motors in the jet aircraft that belong to a particular uh, uh, airline, and you tested these airplanes flying from Pittsburgh to Los Angeles, would you be impressed with the claim that at a 5% level of significance, these new, aircraft, these new engines don't cause aircraft to fall out of the sky? I think I think in that case that a five percent <laughs> significance level might not be might not be sufficient. I think you might want a much 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 tighter uh, significance level to test whether new engines uh, do or don't cause airplanes to fall out of the sky. All right, so I'll have a little bit more to say about that. But for for many kinds of things, a uh, significance level of zero point zero five is. Uh, is what's used. All right, so let's start out by having our null hypothesis be that the mean is some specific value. The mean is equal to mu naught. If we're drawing a large enough sample, we can assume that we've got a normal distribution here. Our alternative uh, hypothesis pardon me, is going to be that uh, the mean is not actually, you know, the population mean is not actually equal to mu naught. Now, what we require in order to reject the null hypothesis and be willing to accept this alternative hypothesis is that from our sample, uh, we have to get a mean that is far away from mu naught. What we mean by 
far away is that the uh, z-score that we calculate, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the, the z-score that we calculate uh, based on the sample uh, <clears throat> exceeds our significance le uh, level. It's either, uh, <clears throat> it's either in this uh, right-hand tail or in this left-hand tail, uh, far away from uh, mu naught to a 0 0.05 uh, significance level. Okay, so uh, we know because we've picked a big enough sample that the sample mean is normally distributed, and we're assuming that it's normally distributed with the hypothesize the the default hy the uh, null hypothesis mean and the standard deviation can be computed as the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n all right and so by measuring the mean of our sample we can take the mean of our sample subtract the null hypothesis's mean and divide by uh, the standard deviation uh, to get our z-score, okay? Now, if that z-score is below minus 1.96 or above 1.96, then we can say that at a 0 0.05 significance level, we reject the null hypothesis that the true mean is mu naught. And instead, we accept the alternative hypothesis that the true mean uh, is not equal to mu naught. Now, this is a, a two-sided hypothesis test because we're not trying to say that the, the, the mu naught, I'm sorry, we're not trying to say that the mean is well above mu naught or that the mean is well below mu naught. We're making the alternative hypothesis that the mean is not equal to mu naught, okay? All right, so uh, based on historical data, our team of programmers produces an average of a thousand lines of production quality code per day. That's astounding. And we measure a random sample over 36 days. We're using a brand new integrated development environment and using this thing, we're producing 1100 lines of code uh, per day with a standard deviation of 300 lines uh, per day. So can we conclude that the new IDE affects programmer productivity? All right, now notice that although our, uh, our mean over 36 days was above 1,000, we're not testing whether, we're, we're not testing whether the, uh, uh, we're not testing whether production productivity has increased. We're just testing whether productivity has changed. All right, so our null hypothesis is uh, we, we, <laughs> we fear or expect, depending on your point of view, that this new IDE has not affected productivity and that the uh, mean uh, is actually still 1,000 lines per day. Our alternative hypothesis is that the mean is not any longer a thousand lines per day. Okay. All right. So assuming that the null hypothesis is true, then if we pick a particular sample, that's going to be normally distributed around the null hypothesis's mean. And the standard deviation is going to be uh, 300 divided by the number of items in our sample. So we get, uh, we get a standard deviation of 50 that we use to compute our uh, z-score. All right, so our sample tells us that we're computing, that we're writing uh, 1,100 lines of production code. And so we compute a z-score of 1100 minus 
1,000, which is 100, divided by 50 gives us a z-score of 2. Now, we're willing to reject the null hypothesis at the 0 0.5, 0 0.05 level of significance uh, if our z-score is either above 1.96 or below minus 1.96. In this case, our computed z-score of 2 is greater than 1.96. So at a significance level of 0 0.05, uh, we reject the null hypothesis, and we conclude that using our integrated development environment, uh, it is no longer true that the uh, mean daily productivity is 1,000 lines of code. Oh, I misread this. Our team of programmers produces an average of 1,000 lines of production quality code. Okay, so the entire team produces 1,000 lines. I thought they were saying that in the team, each programmer was producing 1,000 lines. Okay, uh, that makes a little more sense. Now, so we reject the null hypothesis at the, five, uh, the 0 0.05 significance level, but what if we required more proof? What if we required a higher uh, degree of evidence? Then we could say, well, we really want to make absolutely sure uh, that this integrated development environment really has impact, in fact, effect, <laughs> infected, affected our productivity. So if we crank the significance level to 0 0.01, that in turn means that we have to be plus or minus 2.58 uh, in terms of the z-score that we compute. And now, because the 2 is the z-score that we got, uh, at the 1% significance level, we do not reject. Now, this becomes a business decision, a management decision. Do I need to be convinced to a significance level of 0 0.05 that this integrated development environment is, uh, is a productivity improvement, or a productivity effect anyway? Or, I, or do I need to be convinced to a 0 0.01 level of significance that... Uh, that this uh, integrated development environment has an effect. Nobody is going to die or lose their life savings based on whether we do or do not decide to use this new integrated development environment. So I would argue in this case that uh, maybe, uh, maybe an alpha of 0.05 uh, is even a little too strict. Okay, we've chosen an alpha of 0 0.05. If I think about this as from the perspective of the manager of my coders, well, I don't know. Maybe this maybe this integrated development environment is wildly expensive. You know, it's going to cost us a million dollars uh, to buy this integrated development environment. Um, and so maybe I do really require a lot of proof that this thing has a has an effect. Um, but if there's not a whole lot of cost in using this new integrated development environment, uh, then I would suggest using a lower level of significance would be totally fine in terms of deciding whether to go ahead and use this IDE or not. All right. Now. In a one-sided hypothesis test, uh, our null hypothesis is that uh, the mean is greater than or equal to some particular value, and we want, whoops, sorry, and we want to test this alternative hypothesis that the mean is actually less than that uh, specific value mu naught. Okay, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis 
if the sample X bar is sufficiently smaller than mu naught, again, what do we mean by sufficiently smaller? Well, sufficiently smaller is dictated by the significance level that we require. And we'll just go ahead and use a significance level of 0 0.05 uh, for illustration. We're going to assume that the mean is actually mu naught. Then, blah, 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 central limit theorem, we compute our z-score. And we're going to get uh, x-bar minus the hypothesized mean, the, the null hypothesis mean, over the standard deviation. And now, because we're interested in testing... Uh, whether x bar is sufficiently smaller than mu naught, what that implies is that we're going to reject h naught if the z that we have computed here from our sample is less than the threshold z uh, dictated by our significance level. Uh, all right, so z of alpha for a one sided test in this case. Uh, it turns out is going to be 1.645, okay? Uh, now, remember when we had a two-sided test that the, uh, the low z-score and the high z-score were uh, minus 1.96 and plus 1.96, but here we're going to uh, reject the null hypothesis if we're in this uh, lower tail, this left-hand tail, uh, which occupies only 5% of the total uh, uh, normal distribution. Uh, and that z-score is, is minus 1.645. All right, so let's take a look. Here's our specific example of a one-sided test. Uh, the average days unemployed per year for 36 participants in a job training program was 10 days. All right, so we've got a sample of 36, partic tar <laughs> 36 participants in a job training program, and the mean days of unemployment was 10. The national average is 13 days for untrained uh, but otherwise equivalent individuals. Now suppose that the sample standard deviation is 6, can we conclude at a 0 0.05 significance level that the program, the training program, reduces uh, days of unemployment? Okay. Well, we're not trying to prove that the job training program uh, produces unemployment of 10 days. What we're trying to prove here is that the people with job training have less unemployment than average. So the average, the null hypothesis that we're testing is that the average unemployment is greater than or equal to 13 days. And we are interested in testing the alternative hypothesis that people who have had this job training program have less than 13 days of unemployment. Okay, so uh, we have a sample mean of 13, and we have a standard deviation of our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So 6 over 6 is conveniently just 1. Gosh. I think that number was chosen on purpose. <laughs> All right, so we compute a z-score starting with our uh, null hypothesis's mean. Uh, okay, mean minus. Uh, now this is this is really improperly formed here, but it accidentally works. <clears throat> it should be the mean minus the sample mean all divided by the standard deviation. But since the standard deviation is 1, uh, <laughs> we get away with doing the 
uh, calculation incorrectly here. So the so 10 minus 13 is minus 3. All of that over 1 is still minus 3. And that is, uh, that z-score computed for our sample is well below minus 1.645. So we reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that uh, program participants do have less unemployment than uh, uh, people who are not program participants, okay? Now, um, it's, it's worth wondering, uh, it's worth asking, uh, our, our null hypothesis here is that the mean of unemployment is greater than or equal to 13, and our alternative hypothesis is that it's less than 13. Um, we actually only need to test, sorry, we actually only need to test whether it is, uh, whether the mean is equal to 13 to test whether the alternative hypothesis is, uh, to test whether we can reject this null hypothesis. Because uh, if we can reject the null hypothesis, with mu equal to 13, then obviously we can reject the null hypothesis for any value of mu that we might throw into our calculation uh, that's greater than 13. In other words, if we substituted in place of this 13 uh, some uh, number that's even greater than 13, then our z-score is going to be even more negative and we will still be able to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, evaluating a hypothesis test, uh, whether the mean is greater than uh, some specific value mu naught instead of less than. Let me back up a couple slides here. So here we had tested whether, uh, whether the sample indicated that uh, the mean was uh, well below the null hypothesis mean at the 0 0.05 significance level. This time, we want to test whether uh, the sample mean is well above the null hypothesis mean, uh, again, at a certain level of uh, significance, uh, still in this case using uh, alpha of 0 0.05. All right, well, this is, this is really just the mirror image of the calculation that we did before. Um, our null hypothesis is going to be that the mean is uh, less than or equal to some specific value mu naught, okay? And what we do then is from our sample uh, compute a z-score using the mean and the sample's standard deviation. If our z-score is above mu naught in this uh, 0 0.05 significance level area uh, to the right of the uh, null hypothesis mean, uh, then we will uh, once again reject the null hypothesis and accept the uh, alternative hypothesis. All right, so remember that at a 0 0.05 uh, significance level, our positive uh, z-score threshold there is going to be 1.645. On the other hand, if we want an even higher level of significance, 0 0.01, then our z-score for 0 0.01 is going to be 2.33 instead of 1.645. <clears throat> All right, so concluding that the uh, concluding that the null hypothesis is false uh, always requires you to specify the significance level at which you're making that uh, conclusion, okay? All right, so here's a specific example of this uh, kind of thing. Uh, computer suppliers retail chain has a policy of only opening stores in communities where households spend more than $40 per year on computing supplies and equipment. 
Okay, so $40 per year per household. We survey 100 households in Monroeville, which, uh, well, I was going to say that's where I live, but I actually live next to Monroeville. <laughs> and we discover that the uh, average expenditure in the sample is $40.50 per year with a standard deviation of 10. Uh, is this strong evidence that the community spends more than $40 so that we should open a new uh, retail store, right? Well, in this case, uh, our null hypothesis is that the uh, mean spending for the household is less than or equal to 40. Uh, we actually care about, uh, you know, being equal to 40, but any value less than 40 is still... Uh, in the null hypothesis, because we still will not uh, build a store in that case. And our alternative hypothesis is that the mean is greater than uh, 40. Now, uh, we've been given the sample mean of 40.5. We've been given uh, that the standard deviation of the sample is $10 and there were 100 households in the survey. So that means our, uh, our standard deviation for z-score is uh, that $10 divided by the square root of the sample size. So the standard deviation is conveniently 1 once again. That means that our z-score is 40.5 minus 40 divided by 1, which is only 0.5, okay? Um, and that z-score is too low uh, for us to be able to reject the null hypothesis. We would need, in this upper tail, we would need this threshold for the upper tail uh, to be at 1.645 in order to be able to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that we should build a store in Monroeville. Okay. Now, is this a, you know, is zero point, uh, is the significance level of 0 0.05 uh, appropriate in this case? Well, probably. Uh, we're talking about trying to decide whether to build a store or not. Um, we're, we want to build a store if the households spend more than $40 per year. We'll probably be okay if households in the place where we build are, you know, really only spending $35 a year. We're, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to maybe get rich from that store, but we'll probably do better than breaking even from that store. Of course, it, you know, it depends on the company. It depends on the mat, the analysis, blah, blah, blah. Um, but probably nobody is going to die. Maybe even nobody is going to get fired <laughs> if this uh, if this new store doesn't work out. So, you know, an alpha of zero point zero five here is probably fine. Again, just you know, my opinion. Okay, now rather than using uh, Z scores for making these decisions about whether we are uh, near or far above or far below the, the null hypothesis mean, uh, we really ought to have been using t-scores instead of z-scores here. Uh, we fudged and just directly used s as an estimate for sigma, but we had previously talked about how when you do this, uh, instead of the z-score, you should use the t-score uh, and specify the number of degrees of freedom uh, for the t-score. Now, if our sample is really large, then the t-score will converge to the z-score and we can get away with using the z-scores. Um, but if we had properly used the t-score in our programmer productivity example, Let's go back to that example, programmer productivity example. All right, 
we computed a z-score of 2, and our cutoff for the uh, z-score here at a 0 0.05 uh, level of significance was 1.96. And because 2 is greater than 1.96, we said, okay, we reject the null hypothesis. We accept the alternative hypothesis that this new integrated development environment does affect productivity. However, we should actually have used a t-score at a significance level of 0 0.05 with 35 as our degrees of freedom because our sample consisted of 36 days. This, in the t-score distribution, gives you a cutoff of 2.03. So if we had used the t-score distribution rather than the z-score distribution, uh, we would not have rejected the null hypothesis, all right? Because in that case, two is less than the t-score cutoff, which you know, which raises a whole nother question about uh, the uh, about what significance level is appropriate to. Uh, select. Okay, we have, for this programmer productivity hypothesis test, chosen a significance level of 0 0.05. And we have discovered that if we do this calculation using a z-score, that we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis that the integrated development environment has an effect. Whereas if we use a t-score, we conclude that the uh, integrated development environment does not have an effect. Now, forgive me, but this is, this is kind of silly, isn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, we're, just trying to, to, we're just trying to test the effectiveness of an integrated development environment. And if we use the z-score... Our calculated z-score of 2 is just a tiny, tiny bit above our threshold of 1.96. And so we've accepted it. Uh, we've accepted the alternative hypothesis. Here, we make this correction and use the t-score instead. And our calculated value of 2 is just a tiny, tiny bit below our cutoff of 2.03. And so we don't reject the null hypothesis. Now that's a, <laughs> you know, that's a pretty extreme uh, decision to just make mechanically, depending on which calculation you perform. You know, if you if you accidentally forget and use z scores, you accept that the IDE is an improvement. If you remember to use t scores, you reject that the IDE is an improvement. But all of this is based on this 0 0.05 level of significance. What if you what if you said alpha is 0 0.06? What if you said you're going to reject an all hypothesis uh, at a 6% level of significance instead of 5%? Then you'd end up uh, concluding that the uh, integrated development environment improves productivity either way. Uh, so, you know, you do the calculation, you get a number, following the rules, you make a decision. But should you just blindly do that? Should you just blindly uh, follow the rules, compute the number, make the decision, um, that's a little less clear. Uh, let's suppose that you're trying to decide, uh, you know, we talked about the idea of putting a new store in Monroeville. What if we 
instead wanted to talk about, okay, we want to put a new store east of Pittsburgh. Should we put it in Wilkinsburg or Monroeville or Penn Hills or Plum or Blahnox? You know, we've got this collection of possible locations for our store. Well, instead of just deciding upon a level of significance in advance, we might want to go ahead and just take samples and compute uh, T-scores for all of these different neighborhoods and then pick the best one, uh, even if the best one does not quite uh, meet our uh, significance uh, level threshold. Uh, so it's uh, the job of a statistician to provide uh, useful, actionable uh, information to decision makers uh, to help them decide what decision is appropriate. All right. Now, uh, the computations involved in doing hypothesis tests about population por proportions uh, differ in the way that we've talked about. Uh, we always use z-scores in this case because we don't have a separate calculation for the standard deviation. The standard deviation is simply, uh, uh, you know, p times 1 minus p all over uh, n, and the whole whole thing of that is, is uh, you know, compute the square root. Uh, and as before, we can specify our... Uh, Threshold, in this case, we've got a 0 0.05 significance level. So our threshold is uh, 1.645, in this case, in the negative direction. Okay, so let's have a look at this uh, test of understanding about hypothesis testing. Uh, the marketing manager of a financially strapped theater company wants to increase the average donation from existing donors. Historically, the average gift of existing donors was $200 uh, per donor. All right, so that's uh, one fact that we have, which is that our current mean donation is $200. And I, I'm going to leave the dollar signs out because they're just a pain. All right, so the current average is $200. To increase this average, he proposes to offer a gift valued at $20 for all such donors uh, who again donate. All right, so if you donate again, you get uh, this gift. To test the effectiveness of gift giving, he makes this offer to 144 donors. So that's our sample. N is going to be 144. And what he finds from that sample is that the average gift, X bar, is $230. And the standard deviation of that sample, S, is $150. Test the hypothesis that the gift is effective in increasing... Uh, sorry, it didn't work the way I wanted, uh, is effective in increasing average giving. Uh, clearly state the null and alternative hypotheses and use a significance level of alpha is 0 0.01. So let me write that down. Alpha is 0 0.01. Now, uh, we need to clearly state the null and alternative hypotheses. So our null hypothesis is going to be that uh, mu remains at $200. All right? Um, for completeness, we can throw in a a less than symbol here because we're trying to do a two-sided, uh, a one-sided test. Our alternative hypothesis, H1, is that average donations increase 
uh, above $200. All right, so here's our null hypothesis, which is no change, and here's our alternative hypothesis, which is an increase. Um, now, this is a finite sample, so we're actually going to do the correct thing and use the t distribution here. Our significance level is 0 0.01, so let's use the uh, critical value widget. Okay, critical value widget. All right, here we've got... Ah, magically I've typed these in already. Okay, so, uh, so alpha in our t-distribution is 0 0.01, and for a one-tailed test with 143 degrees of freedom, uh, it's 144 minus 1, we see that our right-tailed uh, critical value is, uh, all right, so T of 0 0.01 with 143 degrees of freedom is uh, is 2.3527. All right, so that's the that's the uh, boundary, and we have to exceed that uh, in order to to uh, reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so let us compute uh, our score here. It's going to be uh, x bar minus mu naught over our estimate of the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So this gets to be uh, 230 minus 200 over uh, let's see, S is 150, 150 over, uh, the square root of 144 is 12. Okay, and so here is uh, uh, these facts written down. Uh, we've got our T-score threshold. Uh, we've got uh, X minus mu over the... Uh, Standard deviation, S over square root of N. That is, okay, 230 minus 200 is 30. Uh, 150 over 12 is, all right, well, that's 144 plus 6. So that is 12.5, 12.5. And 30 over 12.5, I can't do in my head. So I'm going to unleash the calculator here 30 divided by 12.5 is 2.4 which I should have been able to do in my head right <laughs> so that's 2.4 all right and because 2.4 exceeds our threshold of 2.3527 we are able to reject the null hypothesis and therefore accept the alternative hypothesis uh, that uh, this gift uh, proposal uh, does increase donation. Let me uh, flip back to the critical value tool for just a second here. And pull that back up. Uh, in this case, uh, we did use the t-distribution because that is the correct thing to do. But notice that because the degrees of freedom was so high, the difference between the right-tailed uh, t-threshold, 2.3527, versus the right-tailed z-threshold, 2.3263, is is very small and so for uh, 
uh, sample size is this large, uh, you generally can get away with using uh, uh, z-scores in the normal distribution, but it's better to do things the correct way. What, what would I do on an exam? Um, I would I would give you credit for either of these, and I would make a comment that using the t-distribution is the correct thing to do. Okay? Um, now, one other comment I wanted to make here is he proposes to offer a gift valued at $20. We have assumed and maybe this is a bad assumption, I have assumed in interpreting this test of understanding that he's getting these gifts valued at $20 from some donor uh, for free. So I'm assuming that there is no cost uh, to the theater for these $20 value uh, gifts. Uh, if there is a cost then the then we would have to use the net uh, donations, which would be 230 minus whatever the cost of the you know whatever the actual cost of the gift is. Um, if the theater has to actually shell out 20 bucks to get these gifts, uh, then this uh, computation goes to 210 minus 20, uh, and that's a a, a stupid thing to do. So you shouldn't you shouldn't spend twenty dollars uh, in order to increase your donations from twenty dollars to two hundred thirty dollars. Uh, that's probably very unwise. All right. So that is that.